Hello and welcome to Nothing But The Truth. No doubt Rahul Gandhi came back to India on Thursday, but critical questions about his suitability as the next Congress president, as well as questions about the very future of the Congress party, are still crying out for answers. With me to tackle those issues is former Congress MP and one of the future leaders of the party, Sandeep Dixit. Mr. Dixit, let's start with the Congress party. No one would deny that Congress is going through a process of crisis. Mm -hmm. But what I want to ask you is, in your eyes, how serious is the problem? How serious is the predicament the party faces? Pretty serious. You know, uh, I would say, I mean, I can't say of 77 or many years before that, but to some extent of what happened in 1998-99, that period and today. And I think uh, we are uh, uh, as bad, perhaps even worse than what we were in 97-98. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would say I'm optimistic. But the reason I think I'm, you know, we are clearly in a crisis is that it's in far many more states that we've actually lost substantial ground, you know, and it does take a lot of effort to build a party block by block or what you would say state by state. And having lost ground in many of the states, I think uh, we will need far more than, uh, you know, getting together at the center is to get together and get our act together in our states. You know, that's where uh, you know, most of the politics today is played in. In fact, in an interview to the Times of India on Thursday, you said we are much weaker than we have ever been. Yes, yes, I believe so. So, I said, uh, it's my limited memory, but I think that's what I believe. So in a sense, this is an existential sort of crisis Congress faces. Mm, uh, I wouldn't put it that, that bad. I don't think it's existential. Uh, you know, I don't think it's, it's, you know, it's like an you know, existential level event, what they call it. Uh, but I think it's, it's something where uh, getting back to the role, the primary role that we played, I think getting back there uh, you know, is, is our major fight, first of all. Now, at this time of crisis, mm. what is the impact on the morale of party members? I know they must be mm. concerned and worried, but how deep is their concern? How deep is their sense of worry and fear? I think it's pretty deep. Uh, uh, but you see, but what I find very encouraging is that in this deep sense of worry, and you know, you meet workers, I meet workers from my constant CM from elsewhere. In this deep sense of worry is this great desire to start doing something. And therefore, it's not despair. Uh, you know, let me put it that way. There is a d great dif a difference between, you know, being demoralized and a sense of despair. Quite right. I that's not that. there. That's not there. There's no sense of despair, but yeah. there's a great sense that they need to get on with it. They yes. need to start recovery. Yes. yes. Now, given that the party feels you need to start recovery, what was the impact on party sentiment and morale when Rahul Gandhi suddenly disappeared? Uh -huh. That too at the start of a critical budget session when the land acquisition bill, which was one of Congress's most important achievements, was itself under serious threat. What impact did that have on the morale of the party? Uh, I would say uh, it's, uh, you know, his going uh, and going for contemplation is not an issue. I, I don't think that's really an issue. Anybody can go and whether it's 50 days or 20 days, anybody can debate. And that really depends on what a person is like. If they require more time, I think that should be given. It's not the budget session uh, going away that really worried. I think what happened is that because of this land acquisition bill, across Congress persons, for, after a long time we realized that we are finally getting an issue that is for us something that we are feeling uh, you know, emotionally evoked about. We are feeling there's a great potential in that. And that's when he chose to disappear. Yeah, so no, not disappear or take leave. And I think that's uh, where most of us felt that if his leadership was here, it would have done two things to us. One, put him at the place of primacy as a great opposition leader, right? And B, because he was attached to the land acquisition bill, it would have given Congress and all of us a much greater chance to re-emphasize to the people of India that here is a leader who spoke about you, and when something is being done against you, he's back there uh, for you. So Rahul's absence had two consequences. One, the timing was wrong. Yes. And yes. secondly, it meant that the nature of the fight that you were putting up was weaker than it would have been had he been there. Uh, let me not put that way. Let me say we got lost a great opportunity. Lost a great lost, opportunity. Lost a great opportunity to establish yourself as a great opposition leader. And these opportunities don't come that often, right? So that was actually mm. a real problem because mm. Congress now needs opportunities. Yes. And if you lose good opportunities, yes. then you're giving yourself a severe disadvantage. Yes, it, yes, truly so. And, you know, I feel bad because, uh, you know, this is a bill we, all of us, uh, you, know, uh, you know, did related with Mr. Gandhi. Even his biggest critics said that, no, it was Bhatta Parsol, it was Rahul Gandhi. Put so together, they led to this So bill. he should have had a personal stake in it. And yet... I believe so. I and and so. yet, so that's despite that, he wasn't yeah. there. Yeah, so it's, it's a sense of disappointment with people. We wish he was there. Did Rahul's <coughs> behavior, or more importantly, did Rahul's absence, raise questions about either his judgment or his commitment? No, no, not, not so. Not at so. all? No, no, I don't think uh, people are questioning it that way. See, uh, uh, we, we, we look at it 
more organizationally also, you know, and in terms of opportunities. And I think most of us felt that, oh, you know, he was a great opportunity we missed. So it's not that we are judging anybody with any other uh, adjectives or verbs. I think it's just that uh, it's unfortunate that we missed this opportunity. Uh, we hope it had been taken on heads on. And just see, you know, the way Mrs. Gandhi took that walk to the president's well, house. Well, exactly. In fact, I was going to come to that ah. because in Rahul's absence, two things happened. First, Mrs. Gandhi galvanized 14 opposition parties yes. who readily accepted her leadership on the issue of the land acquisition amendments, mm. marched behind her to the president's house. Yes. And many people in Congress asked, if Rahul Gandhi had been president of Congress instead of Sonia, would the opposition have rallied behind him the way they rallied behind Sonia? What's your answer to that question? Uh, I can't really say that. I, I, don't, I can't really say whether it would have had the same impact as Mrs. Gandhi did. Please remember, Mrs. Gandhi is senior. She's been, spent many more years with senior uh, you know, opposition leaders. And you know, in today's circumstances, you can't be a principal leader of the opposition. You can be a first among equals when you're talking about other she political parties. She is recognized. She is very clearly a first among equals. He may not be. Uh, Perhaps not, as of today, because, you know, obviously he's younger, he's not been a party president, therefore he's not equated with others as one party president to another. You know, you know a lot of these things make a difference. So in the circumstances of today, mm. her being party president gives Congress a huge advantage, which wouldn't happen if Rahul was party president. Yeah, in, the, in this aspect, yes, absolutely. You know, as, as somebody who would probably be that little, uh, you know, top of a phalanx uh, which will lead an opposition. She can be, he won't be. She is. He may or may not. He may or may not be. It will, it will certainly take time, it will take effort. I'm, I'm, as a sense, the opportunity has not been given to him, so we can't say it's a no-no. But obviously it would take time. Uh, the uh, questions to, are there. To, yeah, to establish to that level. Now the second thing that happened when mm -hmm. Rahul was away is that people began raking up questions to do with his tenure track record as an MP. Mm -hmm. They began raking up questions to do with his performance at the head of the many campaigns he's conducted mm -hmm. for Congress. Mm -hmm. And the answer most people came up with was that Rahul is still learning. Some actually went stronger and said Rahul has a lot to learn. Mm. Would you agree Rahul is still learning? I mean, it's quite clearly. I think he himself states that. You know, I don't think anywhere he has uh, made a statement. If we actually see his, his performance and take out all the prejudices or lenses with which we very often see him, I think he's very clearly given this message. Even when he spoke in Jaipur, he spoke in Delhi, in the Burari conference, he's constantly said that he's learning. There are ideas in his mind which are rooted in Congress philosophy, and he's trying to implement them. And each time he kind of uh, reiterates and finds himself doing perhaps something better than what he did earlier. But he so, is still learning. That's the key thing. He is still learning. I think he, he says that himself. Uh, in it's, this it's not something only just we say. In mm. this context, mm. against this background and in the present circumstances, let me then come to the critical question everyone wants to hear you answer. Do you believe today Congress needs a new party president or do you believe Sonia Gandhi should continue for at least three, four years? I personally believe that she should continue for three, four years, uh, or longer or less. I can't uh, say the period exactly, because you see, uh, my but she should continue. Yes, and my belief is also rooted in the context of today. Uh, we started with saying that Congress is perhaps facing some of its uh, toughest moments today. <coughs> the battle ahead is very strong. She's had an experience of having led the Congress. In a, in a similar manner from 97, 98. Rahul hasn't had that experience. No, nobody else has uh, had, uh, in fact. So uh, this experience is invaluable in today. Invaluable. Absolutely. When you have somebody who's been through a particular process and is no less today than what she was in 97, 98, perhaps much more so than what she was in 97, 98. Please remember, a lot of people were ridiculing her, were trying to make fun of her, were trying all kinds of dirty tricks against her. She overcame all that. Today she's an established, respected person whose dignity, whose uh, behavior, whose attitude is something that is liked and respected by almost everybody, including the opposition. So in fact, she is today a far bigger leader than she was in 97. All of this makes her invaluable today. Today, yeah. Irreplaceable. To me, yes. Uh, invaluable, uh, irreplaceable. Invaluable. Uh, nobody is irreplace irreplaceable uh, in, in, in a period, but I think today she is irreplaceable. She's our best bet. She's our best general. I'm just going to repeat this because I think it's so critical and so important. Mm -hmm. What you're really saying is that at this moment in time, Rahul would be the wrong person to become party president. Sonia is the best person you no, have. Again, I, I'm saying not, the, not, not saying it's the wrong person. She's the best bet. Doesn't She's mean the best that bet. other bets are uh, any uh, are worse off or something like that. But as of today, see somebody, you know, it, it's like you know when you've got a particular uh, pretty bad pitch, 
right? You have to choose, choose between, say, you know, three or four batsmen, and you say that in a bad pitch, VBS Lakshman is your best bet. Doesn't mean uh, you know you're suddenly degrading Tendulkar in the pitch, or anybody in else. In the pitch that exists today, yes. Sonia is your best, best bet. Best, best in bet, which yes. case, what do you say to people like Digvijay Singh, who on Friday publicly said Rahul Gandhi should immediately take over as party president, and secondly, he said mm -hmm. the old guard surrounding Sonia Gandhi must retire. You know, there is a point of view, and this has been going on for a while. I, I have. I have no is uh, real issues with that. But I you disagree. Point but you disagree. I disagree. Uh, also, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to some extent, had it been a normal circumstance for the Congress, say perhaps if UPA 3 was going on, or even if we had lost, we had perhaps 150, 180 members, and, you know, it was just another loss, not the kind of loss we've had this time, then a change of leadership, a change of people, uh, you know, new ideas coming in, new people coming in, you have that political space to come up with a new leadership. Today now we don't you have don't. that political space. In fact, in a real sense, what you're saying is, because you're reduced to 44, mm -hmm. because you're losing state elections, because you're faced with one of the most serious crises in living memory the party has mm -hmm. faced, yes. Sonia is invaluable. Yes. And in these circumstances, for the next two, three years, irreplaceable. Don't take the risk of changing her now. Yes, yes, yes. Also, please remember... Rahul, oh, therefore, would be a risk. Uh, it's not just Rahul being a risk. A change would be uh, risky. Okay. Let's put it Anyone this way. would be a yeah, risk. Anybody, anybody would be risky. Also, all the others are still there in the Congress. So, if others have ideas, you know, it doesn't mean that I will perform only if I bat on top of the order. Let I, me put I it can like still contribute with my ideas, with my enthusiasm, with my leadership to the party in any position I want, and that's really a true congressman. Absolutely. But Sonia at the top is essential for now yes. and for the next two, three years, one believes. Two, three, four, I, that I can't say. I mean, time is something you really can't say much about in politics. Let me come to something else. Captain mm. Amarinder Singh, whose views accord with yours in many respects, mm. has gone on record to say that a man can't expect to become captain of the ship in just 10 years. Mm. To many, that suggests that Rahul needs to prove. I'm not sure whether prove is the correct word. Mm. He needs to show mm. both to the party and perhaps more importantly to himself, that he has the talent, the skills, and whatever else is required to be Congress President. Would you agree that he needs to demonstrate it? I think uh, Mr. Amrinder Singh spoke with a sense of seniority. You know, he's a senior leader, so perhaps he looks at uh, Rahulji and others, uh, you know, in a different light. So I wouldn't go to that extent to say. But you know, I would say that uh, you know the skills and capabilities, at least I believe, which are a set of his skills and capabilities are today uh, something that the Congress needs in its organization. I think his ideas about uh, democratization are something that's exciting us. Uh, some of his ideas, uh, you know, occasionally we've spoken to him and we've heard it through different quarters of the way he wants to reorganize some of our sections, uh, get our link up back with different types and kinds of people. You know, the, the very interesting thing in which I think nobody caught, if you remember prior to the elections, he started meeting people of different classes and economic qualification rather than the usual so standard. Organi so just, organizationally, just, just, he's essential. Yeah, so I think somewhere he's thinking differently. Uh, and, you know, uh, but to bring that into the core of the party, I think, in one sense, let Mrs. Gandhi handle us politically, lead us in the battles in which we need a pure political fight to happen. And when you have better ideas, let that happen in a manner in which it goes on simultaneously with this, but does not rock the ship because this is not a time to rock us. You know, most of us are comfortable in the old manner in which we are working. You suddenly make us change, maybe we'll get weakened for a while. So in other words, this is also not the time for a dramatic, possibly disruptive overhaul of the party. Yes, I believe so. I believe so. Organizational change must continue, but slowly, steadily, mm. under the full leadership of Sonia Gandhi, who remains the political face of the party. Yes, yes. One other quick question. At the moment, many people say that if you look at the sort of state elections that are likely to happen, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, UP, possibly even Assam, mm. Congress is not going to do extremely well. The real theater where you have to challenge Mr. Modi is not likely to be the electoral field, but in Parliament. Mm. That's where people say Rahul that is weakest. In his absence, Mrs. Gandhi actually became extremely assertive and strong. Mm. Once again, is that another reason why Mrs. Gandhi must continue to be the cutting edge, the face, the apex of the party? Uh, um, no, I, I, I think that I don't relate that with her uh, keeping the Congress presidentship with her. I, I think they are very separate issues. Performance in Parliament is something which, you know, uh, there are many others doing. And uh, Rahulji has, uh, uh, you know, never asserted himself in Parliament in the manner in which most of us believe a leader should, but I think that's his choice. You know, I think he a good choice or a bad choice. Uh, it's a choice. Let me not go into beyond that. I mean, uh, very frankly, uh, you know, 
for example, was Mr. Narendra Modi a great uh, legislature? I, I really don't know. Was he a great parliamentarian? I really don't know. So, you know, uh, in that sense, being a great parliamentarian, does it really also show that you have other leadership capabilities? I will not equate one. This is a virtue by itself. Some people have that and some don't. Rahul, unfortunately, doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, uh, I, I will say he's not seized that opportunity the way uh, perhaps most of us would like him to. But then that's our choice. Uh, you know, I think he's chosen to be do other things. I think he's chosen to okay. take the uh, bull of the Congress uh, organization by the horns much before he does other things. My last question before I take a break. Mm. Sonia, you repeatedly said is essential as Congress President for the next two, three, four years. What about concerns of age and health? She's already 68. Mm. She has been unwell. Mm. She may not be unwell any longer. But are those factors that you bear in mind, age and health? Uh, no, I think that's uh, really for her to decide. I don't think uh, age is an issue with her. Uh, I mean, um, may she, of course, have a great long life, as all of us wish her to be. But I don't think it's it's really so. Uh, she was, uh, as we were told, a little unwell in between. But I don't think it's something that's uh, really affecting her performance. Obviously, I mean, she can't be as energetic as a 40, 45, 50-year-old person. But in today's world, I think it's uh, how you appear, it's what you state, it's the moment you seize that's very important. And those are knacks she yeah. has. Uh, rather than a 100 kilometer walk, a 1 kilometer walk from Parliament to Rashpati Bhavan did more to energize the Congress than any other, any other Padyatra could. Let's take a break there, Mr. Dixit. When I come back, I want to talk to you about what your critics say in response to the sort of interviews you're giving me, as well as I want to ask you, do you represent simply a handful within the Congress or do you represent the silent majority? Join us in a moment's time. There's a lot more still to come. Welcome back to Nothing But The Truth and an interview with Sandeep Dixit, a former Congress MP and one of the future leaders of the Congress Party. Mr. Dixit, you made it clear that your views are that Sonia Gandhi needs to continue as party president for the next two, three years. This is not the right time for Rahul to take over. Mm -hmm. Your critics turn around and say that you're only saying this because Rahul Gandhi appointed Ajay Markan as president of the Delhi Pradesh Congress Committee. Markan is your rival. You don't like his appointment. This is your anguish, maybe your anger speaking out, nothing more. No, I've also heard this, and I, I thought as much. And I think it's it's really insulting my intelligence. People saying that I I don't even care about these comments. I don't think they are related in any sense. Uh, I've said things that I wanted to. I mean, I made certain statements about Deadwood and the party, and uh, you know, different changes. Long time before that, I've uh, always been forthright in what I said, even before. Uh, I mean, in fact, uh, so Ajay uh, Markan becoming DPC no, president. No, no, no. I don't. I, I, I don't. I mean, uh, you see, whether you like a particular person or you don't like a particular person, or you've had a particular history with a person or not had a particular history of person, is only momentary in politics. You know, these things continuously change. I mean, he was. This he's, doesn't he's lie. He's been my media uh, chief, you know, for the past one, one and a half years. And but remember, this is not the motivation no, behind no, your saying no, Rahul. No, no, become president I, I, now. I don't think so. I, I mean it's not there at all because uh, uh, you know please remember uh, you know it's not just mr. Gandhi who appoints somebody mrs. Gandhi also has a role so you know that's an you can turn back and say why am I supporting one versus the other right. and it's actually under her signature that somebody becomes. The, I think it's it's a very trivial and a silly uh, the other point your critics make uh. is that this sort of talk which mm. they say is pitting Rahul against Sonia son against mother is actually dividing the Congress party just when the Congress party needs unity, that you're creating fissures just when, in fact, you should be creating bonds. In fact, it's the opposite. Uh, I think it's the exact opposite. First of all, you know, uh, uh, am I supporting and talking of Mrs. Gandhi is not versus anybody else. I mean, it doesn't matter who the other alternative is. And I haven't even heard of... Except that everyone knows the alternative is Rahul. Yeah, that is different. I mean, that, 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 that would be a circumstance as in when it will come. But, you know, we've only heard of rumors about the fact that there may be a change. There is no definite move. You know, otherwise, normally, you would really speak about... But when the way you're move. speaking scotches any hope of change, or at least you're trying to scotch any hope of change no I'm not I don't want uh, to scotch any hope of change I want to hope for what I believe is the best for the Congress which is which, Sonia which continue is, yeah her continuing and not a disruptive change uh, I wouldn't say not it's not a dis disruptive change but it's, it brings in an element of pausing for the party uh, when it should be fighting politically much more and so the other changes can continue with her leadership so there, you don't think the that. sort of interviews you're giving me yep. is creating fissures, creating divisions? No, 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 I don't think. I mean, it would be, I mean, if people want to see it that way, then I think it's sad. Because, you know, I think we must grow up and find out them, and there are points of view. 
which are stated uh, in a manner in which they are stated with a sense of love for your party, I think they should be taken to be there. You may not believe me. You may not accept what I want. No problem. I mean, I can be a minority but of you just have, one. But, but, you, but in fact, that's what I want mm. to ask you now. Clearly, Captain Amarinder Singh's views on this subject of Sonia Rahul, the Congress's future, accord with yours. The newspapers suggest that there are many others whose views accord with yours. Mm. People like Ambika Soni, Veera Pamoyli, Gurudas Kamath, possibly K.B. Thomas. Mm. But the question is this. Are all of you just a handful of people or do you voice the views of the silent majority? Which is it? Okay. Um, you know, about five, six months ago, uh, you know, when all of us were feeling very worried about naturally what's happening in the Congress and things like that, I started meeting a lot of people. You know, in, uh, sitting in Delhi, you have this great advantage of going meeting, you know, chatting with somebody, spending some time. And what I'm actually saying today is not just the view of Sandeep Dixit. Sandeep Dixit didn't think like this five to six months ago. I think I absorbed from a lot of my seniors, uh, from very seniors as well. Yes, seniors as well, uh, as of course uh, a lot of my colleagues, uh, and I won't name them. And, and they are not, please, uh, when I say seniors or colleagues, they are not the standard set of names you would automatically attach to me just because we all speak it's English. It's a wide I'm range of people. wider range of people. Almost everybody said this. You know, that's when I started thinking that, you know, uh, uh, in a time when there may be a possibility of a change, some people are speaking of change. Uh, are we doing the right thing? And I can tell you with all the sincerity that I have, and what, whatever little uh, you know, I can say, that I'm actually speaking with that belief in my mind. And almost, currently, almost all the people I have met, except for one or two who say, well, if change has to come, it's inevitable. They're not saying it with a sense of disappointment, with a sense that, okay, let's Acceptance. Almost all of them are saying that it would be better if Mrs. Gandhi continues as the Congress President right now. In an interview to the Times of India on Thursday, you said that 97 or 98 percent of the party think like me. Are you really sure it's as high as that? Yes, yes. I 98 percent? Yes, 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 I would say that. So you represent not just the silent majority, you represent the preponderant proportion of the Congress I believe party. So. I believe so. I may be wrong, but I believe so. At least all the people I've met, nobody has given me uh, you know, any, any, uh, any, uh, anything to think otherwise. I'm just going to clarify this because I think it's so important. 98% of Congress, regardless of whether they have the courage like you to speak out or whether for circumstances they are silent, but 98% of Congress wants Sonia Gandhi to continue for two or three years as president. They believe this is not the right time for Rahul to take over. That time yeah, will I think come they later. believe it's not, not the time for anybody to take over or that kind of a change to come. It should be more gradual. Today she's performing adequately. And please remember, a lot of that started happening from the day Mrs. Gandhi came out and led the march to Dr. Manmohan Singh's house. In a very real sense, that act of assertiveness yes, yes, convinced yes, people that, that we fortnight, need her. That fortnight was something that made all of us think. The fortnight which started with Dr. Manmohan Singh and ended with the President March. In these circumstances, what would happen if your views, and I'll add, the views of 98% of the party, mm. you say, mm. are ignored, and sometime in 2015, Rahul Gandhi takes over as party president? What would happen to the party? I think, I think if that happens, uh, it, I mean, uh, as Amarinder Singh Ji or somebody I was uh, listening to was saying that, you know, certain catastrophic events might take place, certainly not. No, no, because uh, all the people I've met and spoken to are also people who dearly love the Congress. And, you know, as we're saying, she's our best choice, but if some other choice is given, uh, I think we would all look and hope and see that, uh, you know, You're enough work is done to sure. keep, us, uh, keep us strong. You're absolutely sure. That if Rahul Gandhi they becomes be, president, they, no, there may be a few who may be who may make different noises, uh, but I it's don't. It's not think, noises. No. The party has split in the past. May it not yes, split it has, again? No, but may no, it not no, split again? No, no, I don't think so. I, I don't think this time the party would split. No. Certainly so you are saying to me, even though 98 percent want Sonia to continue, mm. if she chooses to hand over to her son in 2015, this 98 percent will just grit their teeth no, and please, accept. No, please, please remember, I said in the very beginning. A preference for her is not a preference versus anybody Absolutely. else. It's not uh, voting for Karanji versus Absolutely. Sandeep. But if she chooses for whatever reason to hand over, whether to Rahul or X, Y or Z, mm. and that's something 98% don't want, mm. but if she does it, mm. this 98% will grit their teeth and accept it. Uh, but they will accept it. I'm not saying that most of them, I won't grit my teeth. I mean, they'll be little thing, oh, I, I mean, I, I'll miss Mrs. Gandhi. That's what I'll say. And you know, will uh, there be deep but, disappointment and anguish in the no, party that no, happened? No, no, I don't think so. I don't so think they'll so. just accept uh, it and carry on.
Mm, no, there will be, uh, you know, there will be a time when most people will pause. Uh, and I think if uh, whoever is the next president, and if it's Rahul Ji, they come out and, you know, they, they have the same uh, sense of uh, if, manner of working in which they endear people and bring them together and just give a belief that... Uh, My last question. ...is continuing. I, th I think we all fall in that handover mind. happens, whether to Rahul or someone else, will the party see it as a setback and then say, right, we have to now get on? No, I don't think they'll see it as a setback. I think in that sense, uh, you know, you know, uh, so we're, they'll accept we're it quite robust to be able to. So they'll accept it with resignation. <laughs> no, I won't say it with resignation. I think they'll accept it uh, as a change that some thought should have come later, but it has come sooner than we thought it should have come. Fair enough. So in other words, despite the fact they're saying to me, 98% want Sonia to continue. Mm. If Sonia decides she's not going to continue, they will accept it. But also remember, uh, it won't be just uh, knowing Mrs. Gandhi from whatever little I know of her, and I've only uh, seen her work as as her chief whip. Uh, I believe and I, I really so that it's not something she takes a decision only herself. I think she she's that sense much more of a leader who brings opinions together. So when she will do that or whenever it happens, it will be something in which she would have considered it. She would she will ensure that the Congress a, is ready for something. It's in, in, in a manner in which she will ensure that that change is something that will in the long run be the best for Congress. Sandeep Tikshit, a pleasure Thank talking you. to you. Thank you.